second semi-final, it's the newbie battle. After having two rogue warriors on the first semi-final, it's now time for the one Korean, who is, of course, uh, living in China, to step in the ring. It's a two-and-two -two team facing each other. They were playing together a lot in the Penguin Sky Cup and also in the EC London uh, Cup. And in the Penguin Sky Cup, they were kind of the carries for their team. His opponent, of course, 1-0, to the former best undead in the world against the, can we say that, former best orc in the world? It's definitely up for debate. Is it Focus? Is it Lin? It's always... It's always a debate. Um, sometimes Focus is stronger. Now we see the rise of Lin again. I'm not 100% sold on Lin, as WGL qualifiers are always a little wonky, and not every player is playing the best strategies, and not every player is playing to the fullest. And maybe Lin was. He is, if I'm not mistaken, on top of the qualifier ladder at the moment after being halfway done. So after month and month and month where he was struggling, he seems to be very stable again in like what month is it? August and September. And kind of the question really is, what is one to zero playing? Is he still like is he really sold on the dreadlord mass ghouls? Yo Todd, nice to have you here this early. Or is it late for you? Are you still in Canada? Well, that's definitely the question. What 120 is playing. It could be the case that this is an Orc Mirror. We don't know about that yet. 120 kind of has become the new focus. Who's always tired? Yo Wong, how you doing? GLH little lamb, we owe this man so much. We kind of owe him that we know about this tournament, to be honest. Because... Without Wong and Gornland Harbor, we wouldn't have the information that we have on the scene. And I wasn't aware about this tournament until yesterday, so... Big, big, big shout out uh, to Wong. Who's getting the VIP status here? GLH Little Lamb. VIP. Here we go. That was about time. Waiting for the plane to Malta. Cool. Sounds good, man. Living the life. So I talked to Lin a little early on. He seems to be in a he seemed to be in a very good mood. Uh pretty relaxed, and I think that's what we see here now as well. Just smirking a little. These players, of course, know each other inside out, especially, like, how much do you learn about your opponent when you play two and two with them? Kind of an interesting question that I never uh, asked anybody. Of course, you know a lot about your opponent if you practice with him. But how much do you learn about the thinking process if you play two and two with him? It's a different game mode, granted. Thank you, Creepy Pumpkin, for the prime sub. <laughs> Always nice to see the players offline. This is the first offline event since WCG. So more than one and a half month, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, neither of the players was at WCG. And okay, game starts. We are again waiting for the Netty's watch function to have sound and overlay. This will be like a three minute delay uh, from this point on. So let's check the last encounters between the two players with 120 and Lin. Uh, we have it confirmed that 120 is playing undead. Everything else would have disappointed me for sure. Um, so in general, Lin is slightly ahead when it comes to direct competition, but in the August uh, qualifier, they met and 120 defeated him 2-1. and one. Before that, it was a four-game win streak for Lin. So I think... You can say that he has his number. In the ELO ranking, they're super close together. Lin is rank 4, 120 is rank 5. So let's take a look at this ELO chart of Walker3.info, which is pretty damn great. And let's compare their 
development recently because it's quite fascinating how close they are together. There we go. So you can see in the green, it's Lin as an org. In the red, it's 120. And this is kind of the most important part here, the end. Like this is this, is this year. Um, and it seems like they kind of have the same shape since the beginning of this year. Uh, Lin was, of course, super dominant in 2018, but big downfall, maybe due to some patches. He was really frustrated with the Night Elves. And it, it, like this last bit from the early August, the rise of Lin is pretty damn noticeable. With the ELO ranking, if you're above 2,000, you are a really good player. Lin at the moment, 2,200, one of the very few players uh, that have this. Happy, of course, on top. Moon right behind, but it's only four players who cracked the 2,200. So that's pretty big. And uh, that's a pretty big statement. So definitely, Lin is back in shape and rises to the occasion of more qualifiers. So we start on Northern Isles, and yeah, it's no Dreadlord, I can tell you that much. It's going to be a normal build by 1 to 0. It's been a long time for both of them since they won a tournament. For Lin, it was WCA 2016. That's almost three years ago. For 1 to 0, it was Masters Coliseum in 2018. That's more than a year and a month ago. So, with that being said, the game is ready. And we go. Uh, uh, trying to get it full screen, which is not that easy. But all right, here we go. The first match of 1-2-0 versus Lin is on. And yeah, pretty close. The stats between the two. All right. So I got to tinker with the resources a little, but we're going to have that very, very soon. The fourth best player in the world against the fifth best player in the world, both playing for a newbie. And I guess the resources are right. Yeah. All right. Here we go then. Uh, normal opening for 1 to 0 in the bottom left of Northern Isles, Lynn in the upper right. The winner will face TH in the finals for $2,800. We do not see a Farseer again here. Uh, Lin, old school tier 3 style with that most likely. Farseer is more of a European thing at this point, I guess. Uh, Cash is really playing it nicely against Undead. Like, how well he's using Chain Lightning to kill Liches especially is mind-blowing to me. Thank you, Aswan PKR, for the tier 1 sub, making use of the September. Much love, man. So, Northern Isles. You can have pretty big items there. A lot of consumables here as well, especially in the middle of the map. And I wonder how well 1 to 0 can level. And how aggressive he will be. And how well he can protect himself from the arras of a blade master. But Lin, we know him. Always uh, very interested in expansions, also on tier 2 sometimes, which I think is sometimes a little too greedy. Circle is a good start. Uh, normal creep for 1 to 0 as well. With the claws of attack. Alright, so fast attack. On both sides, naturally the orc always a little ahead. But there's no aggression from Lin. He's just focusing on his creeping. The acolyte can't really do too much. Um, he left the remainders of the little green camp for his second hero. And the lightning shield right there. Can be put to good use. And pretty much same creep routes here. One to zero is taking a lot of damage on his decay which will be regenerated. Oh, he has the best item possible. 
uh, by the unholy aura after this camp, but the regen potion or replenishment potion is helping even more. So yeah, pretty much the best item we could have found. Interesting to see both so passive. There's no attempt to steal items on the either side or to deny creeps or anything. There's a claw and Lynn got it. Pretty early investment into an item. But claws, they don't cost too much. They help so much with critical strike. So it sounds good. One to zero. Had this special creep trick um, where he could go with like only skeletons for these nerves here. But not the case anymore. Forgot the skeletons right there. So a little lack of damage. Still going for his expansion with one fiend only, but this is not working at all. He stole the item, um, leaves the spot for experience for a second hero, and that was really greedy and really dangerous but he retreats lin sees this like okay you got that item already but put the green mark here tier two is done this is the shadow hunter and with that it's pretty much confirmed that we go tier three so with lightning shield he creeps this now skeleton sees it one to zero scouting is good he expects like Ooh, just countering this. Got the paste. Okay, trifecta completed. So yeah, he is going for the Nerubians as well on the other side of the map. Very passive game so far. He's slipping a little in macro. As tier 2 is done, he's at 1000 gold. Do we have a buck again? I don't think so. No. It was just a little slow. Tier 3. Uh, Lich and soon to be Slaughterhouse. Level 3 for the DK. Good coil right now. And a Ring of Protection, which is always good against the Blade Master to have at least one. The Blade Master is getting level 3 as well. With that, he can roam a lot better and finally go for some harass, I think. And that is, of course, time for the Shadow Hunter. Radar, Grunts, no walkers with the tier 3. You will most likely add them later. The question now is 1 to 0. How fast are you going for Banshees? A if you go for Banshees at all. And I kind of like that neither of the players are too aggressive early on. It kind of takes time to get into a series. And especially if your opponent knows you so well as these two clan mates do. Nice steal. Item goes of course to Lin, who got the Wand of Mana stealing, and the second consumable from the upper right as well. It's a greater healing, so both big items, or both big uh, potions or whatever. Go to Lin, stealing Magpie in full effect. I love this. I love this Sentry Ward. Just to see if 120 is expanding and when. Absolutely doable for Undead, and it's a very early tempo. I don't think you can build it much faster, as you need stat use a lot more than the Disable, but that's already good. For creeping, rewards are very good as well. Oh, there's slippers in the, in the marketplace. Can he afford it? He has 500 gold. Pretty sure he's banking for a tiny great hall. That's just his style to go for the tier 3 expo. Pretty much as soon as possible. But we have Nova ready, we have Frost Arm already, and almost the first engagement. It's no level 3. Ooh, item up for grabs. DK gets it. But disengages here. Oh no, it was the Rune Braces, right? Did he just steal the Rune Braces? It's still early. Maybe I'm not the most awake, but... Nice. Players forces are under attack. So Banshee's coming. First, uh, second statue is there as well. Got the fiend for free for Lin. This looks good for the Korean so far. TC coming, Kodo as well. 
and the orb is ready too. I think Lin is well equipped for what's to come. 120 has no money for a third hero at all in case, like, he could sell something, I guess. But no Pit Lord yet, no Dark Ranger yet, no Dreadlord yet. Seems all a little late. Oh, and Red Spot. Nicely trapping the Magnetor here, so it's not much damage from him at all. Medallion of Courage. Damn, this Shadow Hunter is pretty damn tanky. But okay, TC is coming out, and the Kodo is getting caught as well. If 1 2 0 gets both of these, or at least one kill, that's pretty good. L walks into the Stomp, though, everything is, is hurt. Purchase the Hex of the Banshee, but there was no curse coming out, especially out of the Blade Master, so damage is still good. Statues are there but how many coils that was the last one he's got to get out there he's gonna lose a lot more fiends if he stays in level four for the dk there's soon to be more storms i don't know why one two zero is staying in this fight especially without curse not too sure he can take this there's no nukes anymore either has a coil very soon Saved it for the banshee so we do have curse now Pretty tense fight here, 41 supply against 44. But now the statue is out of this fight. Oh my god, the block. Oh my god, the block. So sweet to take care of this in that stage of the game or in the fight. But here's the stomp. Now is ready and therefore he has to get out. Exit kill. Nope. 41 supply is still up for 1 to 0. 46 full in. A player's forces are under attack. The Raiders survived, which is big. To have that disabled. Shadowhunter got up to level 3. TC got quite a bunch of experience. And this level 4 for the DK is not really worth that much. Is he really playing this dual hero? Looks like it, right? Got oh! We'll get level 3 here now. 1 XP short. That first Banshee snipe was really good. That helped so much in the fight. As you can see... How often this Blade Master is missing now? So Lin, what do you do? This looks like a tiny great hall. And 600 gold. This TC is really nice. From a very tanky SH to survive the mid game to a very tanky uh, TC now. To get a good start into the late game. Protection plus 4. 1 to 0 is playing without a TP now. A nice deal by Lin. We got level 2 critical strike. Is a little exposed now though. And here's the Pit Lord with Howl of Terror. 50 supply pretty much for both of them. No TP on 1 to 0. If he has a bad start, this really rough and this stomp was so big. How to get out? He has to fight. Heal wave. And there's a lot more mana where this one came from. Next stomp is ready in a second as well. Howl of Terror is of course good. No dis uh, no disenchant at all. Using a coil offensively. Last bit of mana on the Blade Master. And this fight starting off nicely with a double damage mitigation of the undead. But in the meantime, Lin has the great haul up. Attack. This was a decent distraction, but the expansion didn't pay off yet. Pretty much a do or die push. For the Chinese undead. TC is not level 3. This is still a good time to fight. It's a couple of kills but has to re-engage the statue. Completely out of position. And so he has only one statue remaining. Nuke on the Blade Master. But there's a big healing. You should definitely be able to use that. And the stomp in the backline. 1 to 0 is not able to dodge the stomps. Or to disable the TC in any way or form. But he has good solo target damage against these Berserkers, so they're not doing too much. But if he takes out the statue, where's the region coming from? He can't morph, uh, move them thanks to the end snares and the purges. And this region is gone. But look at the misses, man. Curse is an insane spell. Can the Lich reach? Does he have another Nova? Yes, he does. Good. Poros here as well for the last hit. Blade Master will he be forced into the big healing. Doesn't seem like a reveal now. And the next Banshee falls. 53 supply. Full in. 45 for 1 to 0 only. And there's no counter expansion coming up, mind you. Items go to the Korean. But the push goes on. Tower down. 
Can he kill some peasants? There's still no TP on the undead. He's trapping him here now. There is a stun in a bit. He's positioning himself already with these rune braces and the ring plus four. He is unnukable. And there's no way to get rid of that mana. So the stomp is ready now. Decent splits now though. He was taking care of that. Kodo has not eaten, has to get healed. This is big damage for pretty much everything. The fight is all over the place. Lich not level four yet, needs a coil very soon. Statue arrives, Banshee is hurt, needs the healing, but good focus fire by Lin. Really, really good focus fire. There's no mana anymore on the Shadow Hunter though. So not that much healing. Can he nuke the blade? Nope, there's an invul. Pitlord pretty much useless now without cleave, without howl. But he gets the code of the fiend is coming back. It takes a while though. But Lin is killing everything. 41 supply. And drowning. And there's constantly a Kodo to provide this aura, which is so necessary against the curse. Good burrow again, man. This is quite sick. So Kodo falls, but it always soaks up 2,000 damage or so. And the statues. The way and the speed he kills the statues. Desperate attempt to nuke the TC before he rises up to level 3, but there's the heal wave and more kills. Kodo eats Arrives and has dinner. Constantly. 1-2-0 is down to his heroes. Trying to create this choke. To have the pit lord in front, but... You need the regen, and it's constantly so. He is sniping these statues like crazy. It's like he has heat-seeking missiles for these guys. Uh oh critical strike for 160. Stomp against the DK. There is no coil. Arm was in the air twice, but the disable was absolutely perfect. 1-2-0 is leaving the game, and Lin wins the first one. A little too eager, maybe, to go for that push. He really, really wanted to get that push uh, done before the level 3 TC was there. But items were missing. And Lin was playing really good. And this time, I think it was a well done expo, timing wise. And again, the reason there's no GG is because we are Nettie's watch. There's no chat. You don't have to stir up drama when there is none, guys. So second map is going to be played on Echo Isles. And we're loading into this in two minutes. But yeah, of course, um, the items for orcs are always pretty good. Um, there was no big chance to nuke in this game at all. Shadowhunter was not attacked once. He was always in a good position as well, even though when the fight was all over the place, he was close to his heroes with the big potions, and that last moment when the TC got the stomp out. Marvelous! Marvelous! Echo Isles could be the Dreadlord play again, which I really, really, really don't like. Not against great opponents, but you know, 1 to 0 likes to troll around and likes to keep things interesting for him, at least. So we're loading into the game. And 1 to 0's map choice is Echo Isles. He's always been a little weird with his map choices. Can of course be pretty good for an orc with 10 claws and the shop control you get. You can get. But he feels comfortable and he's playing with a lot more 
expansions lately and it's absolutely doable to play expansions here. So, map number 2, 1-0 for Lin, match points. If he wins this map, he's up against TH, who 2-0'd Fly in the other semi-final. And with that, let's go. Colors should be fine. Lin in the upper left going for a Blade Master here. No uh, fast here first and a DK right there. So what kind of build is it for both players? Thank you UU13 for the tier one sub. Once again, another user making use of the September where subs are 50% off. You will get the replays of this tournament, of course, in our Discord if you sub to this channel and no ads, sub badges, etc, etc. So, normal build by Lin, with the shop, no rush. On the other side, there's the second ziggurat. DK second ziggurat, it's definitely ghouls, as he builds the fourth one already. The question is, aggression, which would be very weird, or expansion, and this item, might leak the expansion. Oh, one, two, zero. You greedy, greedy fool. On Equiles. Okay. Lin is far away, of course. The base to expansion distance is really big. Doesn't start off with the best item. Has a one burrow build. So the early aggression isn't too big by Lin. There we go. Circle to start things. An expo coming up. Since it is a, this tech attack. is a lot earlier for Lin, there's always the option to go Wyvern, uh, which will be hard countered, of course, as the beginning. But he's taking the time to creep the 12 o'clock for the big consumable, and especially if he gets the Scroll of the Beast here. This can be good to punch down this expansion. Whatever item he gets here, it's pretty damn good. With 120's control, he might be able to get us around early on the grunt. That's the best thing he can hope for at the moment, I guess. Oh, big invul. Nice! 15 seconds of Blade Master right clicks with a clause of attack in his inventory as well. Oh, yeah, I take that. But 1 to 0 is not too greedy. Going for the, the, for the Nerubian Tower. Nothing to protect his base, though. So Lin knows. He's a little low on health at the moment, but his tech is at 75% almost. Players forces are under and no level 2 for 1 to 0. That was exactly the problem that Fly had with TH in the first semi final. And Blade Master is already well equipped, but the scouting for 120 is good. He knows where his opponent is, and he's trying to punish this with good normal damage from the ghouls. This is one of the more important spots for 120, as this is where the ghouls really shine. Death Knight gets it last second. Ooh, that was close. Blade Master was ready in Windwalk. Thank you, Source DE, for the two month resub. You guys kept War 3 alive. Thank you so much. Thank you for the sub and for tuning in. So. Graveyard now to wall things off. Tech for 1-2-0. And what do A we have? TC second, attack. one beastery. So no casters yet. Then it's still hiding. And it's not counter expanding. At the moment. But it's a Raider Walker build. We've seen this more and more. Staying on tier 2, getting the early anti-casters and spirit link. It's not gonna be as powerful in the late game, but it's gonna help to ex establish an expansion. Watch awards again. So nice. Second Acropolis to be able to TP here, second shop as well. This is such a different one to zero. Getting the Naru, having the TP ready, 
Second Narrow in the main, second shot. He's playing this so careful. So, Raider Walker coming. Blade Master close to three. TC starts with Aura only. Oh, DK has a tough time against this creep spot, but gets the panel of energy. He really has a tough time with this, actually. Not level three still. And Lich is still a little away. But he's using his extra resources for defense. And he's floating in gold. 1,000. He has to explode into a heavy tier two, I guess. Or just rush tier three, if he allows Lin to have the expansion as well. What do we get here? Ring of Regen. And yeah, as I said, sometimes Lin... Wow. Immediate Temple of the Damned. This could absolutely be Necros. He's... Ah, yeah, he sold the altar. Has to rebuild it now for the lich. It's gonna be a late lich. Uh, but he has to invest a lot of resources into the production. But I guess it's still a mistake, though. He could have built this altar a lot earlier. Maybe he just forgot. And this should be killed. 1 to 0 only now reacting. It's not enough damage. Not at all. Okay, so how do you want to fight without a Lich? There's no way against the Blade Master like this. Skeleton sees the altar. How does he want to reach? Drive by a ghoul attack would be doable. That's his biggest chance, right? He's building double altar now. What the hell? Like one of them will go through, that's for sure. We open with banshees. That's a way a player's forces are under attack. to deal with the blade, of course. But this time we're gonna have early walkers with the spell. Do we have an adept upgrade already? Not yet. It's coming though. And this map is almost empty. Alta comes through. Tech to tier 3, no necro yet, he kind of loves to see cripple on the blade, but he's not that scary yet, so it's understandable. And tier 3 for Lin as well, for the Kodos and Orb, and the Shadowhunter. Unusual game! So with this late altar, of course, late tier 3, no orb, but that's the biggest downside, I guess. You don't really need possession, it's nice to have, but yeah, triple hero, of course, really big. Pendant of energy bought from the TC. A player's and Lin's expo is up attack. as well, late master's trying to steal some more experience, is it worth it? Lich is out. But how do you want to level this Lich now? There's pretty much nothing left on the map. Getting Nova is so hard. And we have three, three heroes on the Orc side. Coil on the Banshee. Position is kind of good. Feet should be protected. Curse already everywhere, but we do have Adept training and this is gonna be a big dispel. And Snare is making sure this Banshee dies, but we have one more here. No coil ready, but can't fight into the towers, apparently. We can just siege the main, though. Players forces are under attack. Lich, what is this Lich doing? I think there was a chance for Lin. Okay, it's still there. He's surrounding that Lich. And how many coils do you want to spend on your second hero who's only level one? Nice stomp, can't coil, boom, chops his head off. And he's go just going for the second one. This must be a TP. Could have passed it maybe to that Lich, but then the DK is exposed as well. Dropping so low in supply. Lich is coming back. 
just fiends. Decent positioning for Lin to intercept the reinforcements. Shadowhunter third will have the same issue as the Lich, but for a third hero it's not that big of a deal. Might be nuked a lot though. But even if he's getting nuked, that nuke doesn't end up on the TC, and I think that's okay then. Shop Burrow, no reinforced defenses yet. But Lin is owning this map now. Players' forces are under attack. Should he creep with the lich only? Oh, Lin so knows where he is. Uh oh, there is a TP this time, but he can't get to his expansion anymore. He wants this big creep for his lich, and he gets it. Level two. All right, panel of energy on his side as well. But how to get out there? Must be a TP. That's the second one. In just a minute, Stomp, Banshee taken out, and another one! Oh no, four supply! A and a lot of curse. It's just gone. He's building so many. 66 supply for 1 to 0, though Lin is so greedy at 50. Third attack upgrade, though. Oh my god, it's so expensive. Must be a pit lord, yeah, yeah. And that's a big one to zero push. A player's forces are under attack. Blade Master's distracted, has no is staff, and one to zero is pushing. 76 supply. Lin was too greedy for such a long time. Pit Lord has Howl, of course. We have Nova and Frost Armor here. Double pendant of energy on the undead side. And he's pulling the ghouls, and he has an abomination. Lin, how to engage into this? TC comes in, waiting for the storm. There's, of course, no disable. He wants these ghouls and even takes out uh, Banshee as well. Blade Master's finally back. That took some time. And again, he's going for the statues. There's two, so that's decent, I guess. Proto Beast has eaten massive stun, so he can't really nuke. The Nova is, of course, not good enough. More fiends coming in. The Pickard is doing a good job. Lin is losing more and more, still with a thousand gold. The next stomp will be big right here, but he doesn't have the mana for now. But this is again the last statue. Lin needs... or uh, to Zero needs more. Guaranteed kill if there is no destroyer form ready and an invul. But walkers are falling. Raiders are falling. The fiends are not. And so the 3-0 fiends are doing tremendous damage to the backline or to the, pretty much everything. Shadowhunter on level 1. Nice micro on this ethereal form. The Kodo has eaten an abomination, must be nuked to get it back. This stomp was massive. Constant curse, level four on the Torrent Chieftain. He's slowly but steady getting these kills. Second Devour off, and he's not focusing the Kodos anymore. There we go, one Fiend back. Is it time to nuke something? He just wants these Kodos gone to get rid of the Command Aura and get his units back. But in the meantime, the Fiends are suffering. 65 supply for one to zero left, and Lin is still at 50. He's Burning through his thousand gold bank, finally level four. No level two for the pit lord yet, but he's close. Level four for the blade master. Shadow hunter survives as well. Lin retreats. That's open damage for the undead. And level two, the cleave. The cleave, so good. Uh, ah, next that you arrive. One to zero's army composition, I think, was pretty good. And he's taking out the expansion. How fast did he rush to the 3 0 upgrades? And to 70 supply. Before he gets rid of a walker, TP out. He accomplished everything he wanted to and saves the statue. And didn't lose anything of value. And it's back to 72. Lin was too greedy and his supply stuck now. Burrow gone A and Great Hall gone. Under attack. Ouch! He will have 600 or 700 gold very soon for the next tiny Great Hall, but that's a lot of gold now. So, 52 supply and supply stuck. He could kill something. And he does. 
to at least not lose too much gold. TC with the second bandit as well. It's a lot of mana involved. We have 600 extra mana if we combine both sides. There's still... Okay, this abomination will be devoured soon. Attack. We have a shade for scouting. We get master training. We get disease cloud. We get juicy upgrades for 120. Second Temple of the Damned. Mass Banshees. Cripple, I think, doesn't do too much anymore. So it's just Mass Banshee. One, attack. two, three, four, five. Six is in production. So, if he takes over the Kodos or a couple of Raiders, this is such a powerful army. Tiny Greatall, 700 gold, not invested into army. He has an invul, he has two invuls actually, and a heal scroll. Does he want to push with 50 against 80 undead supply? Master training is not done yet, takes forever. Furrow upgrade only now, Shade sees the blade. Why do we have double pendant on the pit lord? Ah, okay, for more mana region or faster mana region. Thank God. So disease cloud ready. How many possessions will we see? Master training is done. Mana is full. This could be big, big, big plays for one to zero. He doesn't have an invul. His heroes are nukeable. Shade sees everything. TC has 10 armor. Shadowhunter is not level 3 though. Anti-magic shell. Nice against the storm. But as Happy said in the interview, just for distraction. Because it's so confusing. Makes focusing harder. And of course helps against the storm. Not against Hex though. He's going for the Lich right away. But the coil is ready. How far away he is with his DK from the TC. That's absolutely necessary. Crit for 204. Crit for 183. Coil. Oh boy, that's so much damage on this Lich. Nova comes in, stomp again. Hex on the DK! He is just killing this Lich, is he? Yes, he is! Oh my god. Oh my god. Without a Lich, there's no way you can fight. Lin, hero focus, big place. Will we see some possessions? He's in a better situation right now, maybe on the Kodo. No, he's just focusing, not taking them over. Lich is back from the tavern. That's what you get when you don't have an invul. DK still at 400. 84 supply. He's breaking into high upkeep. How crazy. Wants to take out the Pit Lord or the Coil right, right before the Stomp. Really good. Stomp, of course, does no damage. He's losing Raider in the background. Still waiting for the possession. Slitch in trouble again. Coil could be on cooldown. No, it's not. DK is so far away. I love the positioning. Love, 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 love the positioning. TC can read for a little bit more stun. This time he gets the DK, but the damage is just not enough on this Lich. Ooh, 190 critical strike again. Blade Master's not even level 5. Hits the big stun again, but not on the DK. Needs to take the healer out, and Lin taps out. We get a third game as 1-2-0 is victorious on his very map. It was overwhelming. The expansion worked nicely. Lin didn't pressure it. Lin wanted to go for the counter expansion. Was then too greedy with more, with, uh, more than a thousand gold on tier one, uh, on, on tier two. While one to zero was already at three zero. Upgrades and eighty supply. That was a little too much. But good for us. So we get our deciding match, who will be the opponent of TH, the winner of the next map. That's for sure. And the game has already started, so in one and a half minutes we are loading in as well. And it's gonna be Concealed Hill. Not sure if the main gold mines were down, but 
the one hero focus work that took a lot of gold out of one two zero's game. But he had the AD supply. That was a that that was definitely a death push. And yeah, this weird build still worked. Um I think we all agree that Lin was too greedy, had too low lumber. And that allowed 1-2-0 to make the Lich stronger, to get to tier 3, to get this big army. But this expansion was so protected, I don't think he can break it at all. So, let's conclude this. Game three, Decider in the bottom left of Concealed Hill. We have Lin in the upper right. We have one to zero. This is Concealed Hill. So what's it for one to zero? Is it a crypto this time? Is it an expansion again? Is it normal play? There is variety in undead plays today. First question, Dreadlord or DK? DK it is, okay. Next question, second Ziggurat or Graveyard? Lin again not going for a Farseer. And again not going for a Fast Tech. Okay, second Ziggurat. He's trying it again. Never change a winning team or running system, I guess. But this is infinitely harder to do on this map. One to zero scouting if there's a Farseer or not. If there's a Farseer, I think you can forget the expansion. Blade Master can still be dealt with somehow. A player's forces are under attack. Okay, Acolyte out. Sacrificial Skull. Rod of Necromancy, and here we go. Wonder if he sells the altar again. Is that really necessary, I question? But if he's playing it, most likely is. So Lin starts a little better, item-wise, than last time, where he had a ring of protection. Lots of poison damage from these assassins, and of course the Null is not to be underestimated. So Lin is moving over now as the shop finishes, he has two selves and the tech ready, even takes the grunt with him. So looks like an early aggression. Talisman of Evasion, TP was sold of course, Alta is gone again sells it to have the necessary resources if he loses his hero now he's in deep shit circlet full in not level two but one grunt there's no nerubian tower yet this acolyte should not fall really late master what's he attacking he's going for the dk He's straight up going for the DK. There's a lot of wind walk. Blade Master gets surrounded. Tanks more damage than necessary. Repositions now. This is all buying time for the Nerubian Tower. Even coils aggressively <coughs> to make sure the Blade Master is tanking damage as well. You don't want to trade with the blade, but that was a nice reaction. And now he's safe. At least safer. You're never safe from a Blade Master, obviously. So how will Lin adjust? He knows what's up. Starts the Sim City again. Is one to zero. Of course, there's attack. no creeping at all now. Pretty much just sitting on his expansion. Blade Master will find level two and wait for his tier two edition. And then, yeah, expansion Raider Walker again or tier three. And push or wyvern? What's Lin's reaction? One to zero feels a little safer. 
with more acolytes here with the expansion almost done the damage was not too much All players forces are under attack Ooh, could be a big steal okay not using the coil it was nighttime he couldn't really see it but maybe for the ogre magi these end snares are dangerous but to zero not willing to commit though oh perfect oh my god this coil went to the blade master and the item as well can he at least steal this yes so two out of three go to lynn that's close to level three and i wonder if Lin is going for the mid creep because it takes a lot of time and it basically kills your early tier 2 aggression. Rebuilds the altar earlier this time. So we will get the fast lich. Wow, ah, okay, DK got it. And saves the ghoul! So fast, so good. Can the Blade Master get this one? It would be his level 3. 1 to 0 is playing around this so nicely and outraces him on the way to level 3. Sick! A player's forces are under attack. That wasn't easy at all. It's the TC second and Raider Walker again. So it's pretty much the same build again. I see a couple of what the fucks in chat already and to be honest, I don't like it too much either. The player's forces are under attack. But if 1 to 0 is going for the early Banshees again, it's kind of good to have this spell. Just not sure about the timing of the expansion. Can't he go to tier 3 and buy a tiny even if it's more expensive? Shouldn't it be more safe? I'm not too sure. A player's force it's crazy how the skeleton scout this, how fast. TC level 2. He has a staff. There are still corpses. He has still a lot of necromancy. But cool to have a walker here. Adept is not ready though. It's just the normal right clicks. If he had a second rod. He coils the skeleton. Needs to stomp against this. Oh my god. And he can't take it out. But really cool next level plays. It's again Lich Temple Slaughterhouse. 1 2 0's newish style against Orc. Invis. Oh, the plays of 1 2 0. The player's forces are under attack. Remo would be so proud to see these early banshees. And the Invis DK. Oh my, oh my, this is so much time. That 1 2 0 is just fully mining. No reveal. Easy coil! But unholy aura. And now he might be yeah, forced into the TP. Quick reaction by Lin. And it is a TP. He can totally afford that though. 1000 gold on the way to tier 3. This time it's all a little earlier. And the Lich doesn't have too much problems. To attack. rise up to level 3, I think. So Lin's Expo is almost done. Tech to tier 3 is in the works as well. First total coming, more creeping. CH, a big map. With a lot of experience. And very good items. This is an insane movement speed, by the way. And of course, having more HP region is a nice synergy with Spirit Link as everything is hurt a little less at the same time and everything is healing a, a little more at the same time. But all right. Statue in the main to pump up this uh, Banshee. 
in mana. 50 supply, adept upgrade, blade master, and the entire orc army is coming in for the kill. Red Drake still up for grabs, and oh, he has to take this time. That's free damage. That's a lot of free damage for Lin. Not the most raiders here, but the damage is done. And the slaughterhouse is killed. This will mean later abominations, and he has to be really careful about that statue. If he loses that statue, that's horrible. Tier 3 is done. He's doing the second production building as well. I think Linus is... Oh, this stomp. The entire army disabled. He doesn't have a TP, but he doesn't need that with the speed scroll and two movement speed auras. That was big damage. I always think that's a little undervalued in Warcraft 3 to kill production buildings, but of course on the other side it takes a lot of time. A player's forces are under attack. And now Lin with the first headhunters tier 3 almost done not forced into a tiny gray tall if this expansion is standing tc level 3 looking good for lin nice snipe again item is the belt of giant strength more tankiness level 3 for the tc you got level 2 stop now and the fountain in the back nice steals oh my god <laughs> Good eye sniper. Is the fiend stuck? Yep. Whoopsie. Notice it now. So, two base, two base. One to zero, building more statues, queuing the next abomination. This delayed the temple, uh, the adept upgrade by a lot. He can't start the master training at all. He kind of needs a second temple. Thank you, Sar Nation, for the prime sub. Or if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub for free and get the replays of these matches and no ads. Pit Lord again, third time in a row. No level three Lich, two Banshees. We have the Ghouls in here as well. So let's see what this does. 70 supply against 61 items. Heal scroll, no Invul, no Shadow Hunter yet. Seems like a little lack of healing. Invul went to the Lich. We have a Heal scroll here as well and the TP and the Mana Potion. First ghoul being taken out. Epicenter Stomp hitting a lot, but once again, not the DK. There is healing. Kodo is coming in for the heal, being supported by this end snare. Works nicely. Stun is so good. DK is taking a lot of damage. Has death pack though. Can eat some stuff. Lich is in trouble. Next Stomp hits. There's no anti-magic shell yet, but there's coils. And more of that. Level 4 on the blade with level 2 critical strike. Lich being saved again. There was the last Nova. Kills off that raider. Lack of end snare soon, maybe. Kodo Beast number one has eaten. Kodo Beast number two has eaten. Six supply in the stomach. Still lots of misses though on Lin's side. The coil arrived in time. Maybe an opening to kill that Lich, but there's no stomp anymore. Statues are healing constantly. Lin's focus seemed to be a little off. Or he prioritizes things differently. Walkers are almost all gone. This one has one more dispel. Fiends are falling. 1 to 0, down to 62 supply. Lin at 68. He is overpowering him. Reinforcements are coming from the north. But the next fiend is dying. This is kind of looking good for Lin if he can stay in this fight with this little mana that he has. Blade Master is still doing a lot of damage. There's one more storm soon. Is he aiming for that ledge? They're still... Thanks to the potion. Ooh, he had the coil already in the air. Has to choose now. Three targets. Lich, Statue, and the Fiend. Two of them will most likely die. That means no coil at the moment for the Lich, but he's not stomping here. This could be a big stomp, but there's no follow-up this time with the Blade as he's busy in the back taking out the Banshee. Level 4 for the TC. It's so, so much movement speed. It's so much movement speed. Coil, not on the Lich, but the Fiend, and he TPs out. Whew, 1 to 0, you lost quite a bit here. Kodo was saved. 67 supply still for Lin, who still doesn't have the Adept upgrade. No disease cloud. Got a half a level in this. Thank you, Reptile700, for yet another sub. He didn't even have the war drums yet. Let's build some upgrades for 1 to 0. He's 
skill at level 3 for the Lich. This hurts him so much. This isn't the craziest blade. 1 to 0 is just not ready yet. This helps. <laughs> One of mana stealing against the TC helps as well. Checking this out. Second Temple of the Dam, finally. That took forever. Maybe Boro can help in the fights. Do you want to engage again with the 10 supply lead you have? Three Kodos! How much can he dodge? This time the focus is right on the statues. Realize there's only two. Howl of Terror, nuke on the TC, but he will find that backline. And again, the Kodos, they are freaking hungry. And with the Spirit Link, they do survive again. This is 10 supply eaten. How long can he keep them alive? What is Zero is trying to TP out. He is TPing out. Oh my god. Oh my god. Another Banshee dead as well. Lin is destroying him. There is, of course, vision now. And these Kodos move very slow. But this army is ridiculous. He got the cleave now. Okay. And another invul. The scouting of Lindus. Insane. Don't want to steal. <laughs> Tiny great hole in his inventory. Okay, so it wasn't pretty much not scouting. It was pretty much not scouting. Again a TP. Lin is bleeding him dry like crazy. 1 to 0 saw him though. Not sure if this is necessary. Walker upgrade. I feel like 1 to 0 needs a little miracle. This is the second expansion. This costs a lot of time because the peons are dead. But that's about it. Ooh, what's this going to be? Zeppelin? Zappers? Shredder. Okay, he was struggling with low lumber before, so why not? Especially if he has three gold mines there. Finally the Adept upgrade. Lich is not high level. DK is not close to five. Pitlord is not close to three. TC is close to five. Blade Master four and a half. It's crazy how he plays this without a Shadow Hunter. They were one on the Berserk, was interesting me. 2 0 for the Fiends. He couldn't even get to the 3 0 this early. But he's at 80 supply. Has no TP this time. Just one invul. And Lin can just camp on the high ground. Also, no disease cloud, no destroyer upgrade. Trying to go for the master again. Or the main goal. 1,600. Fortified defenses or reinforced defenses for the tower and a shop and the shop control right here for invul and heal scroll and a TP. Lin seems to be in full control. A player's forces are under attack. Catches a banshee. Feel free. There's one more invul in this. Everything has been devoured. Or close east to five. But all right, he gets that invul. Has two, three. Oh no, two. One was swapped, so. At one point, one to zero has to move. And he 
magic again. To prevent from the storm a little damage, cause some confusion. Pillar up front, no upgrades on him, no ring of protection, no talisman. TC is a big tank. 80 supply, 90 supply, 4120. Do we see possessions this time? Super hard focus on that uh, pit lord who dodged the storm with an invul. Still no possession. TC in focus. Here we go. Grunt been taken over. Raiders maybe. One. Oh, he, oh my god. He cancelled three possessions with one storm. This ghoul drive by is not working at all, but at least this time the Kodos can't eat. That storm was gigantic. That was perfect. But okay. Still trying to break. Don't want to fight an upkeep uh, an uphill for that mischance. So he's attacking the south. This will not prevent Lin from mining the middle, but maybe he can take out the Great Hall. Does he have enough damage? Needed this invul on the pit lot to keep him alive. Super big Congo line for Lin. One Berserker pretty much for free. Still 2-0. TC is not nuked at all. Might find an epicenter stomp in a second. Pit lot is again. Oh my god, this damage. DPS is dropping so hard. Abomination must be coiled, is gone, and that's level 5. The stomp is so sick. Takes out a fiend. Everything was stunned here. Just everything. Couldn't heal, and that's the end of the DK for sure. Passes the invul, couldn't use it anymore though. And with that, there's no way. There is no way in hell he can do it. And Lin enters the grand final against TH. In the internal newbie battle, the Korean prevails. And wow, what a series. What a cool series. For once, 120 is playing series, not Dreadlord, Mass Ghouls, shenanigans. His very own style, but a very powerful style. And Lin was fooled once, made a few adjustments, and then was better. This Mass Kodo play, 120 was so overwhelmed. When the Kodos were storming into his army and a 10 supply. Great. Great. That was a very, very, very cool series. Would have loved to have Remo by my side uh, to point out a few more excellent plays because it's always hard to do play by play analysis when you do solo cast, but this guy deserves a day off, so. That was crazy. And it's just getting better. We have the grand final coming up. It's Lin versus TH. A Warcraft 3 classic, one might say. The best human in the world against, again, the best orc in the world, as it seems. 1 2 0 for. Oh, well, again, not able to go into a grand final, not able to recreate his Masters Colosseum success, but still a little money for him. He shares the third place with Fly, gets. How much was that? $700 or so uh, for attending this tournament. We go into a little break and then we have the dream match. Or one of the dream matches we could get here. TH versus Lin. I hope that TH plays human. Um, we'll see about that. So stay tuned for the grand final of the People's Premier League.